We all experience what is known in philosophy as libertarian free will. That is, we feel like we are in control of our actions, and that in a given situation we could have done otherwise. You feel, for example, like you've chosen to listen to me right now, and that at any moment you can choose to stop. The problem, however, is that science is telling us, loud and clear and unequivocally, that while our feelings of free will are real, free will itself is an illusion. A very powerful one, for sure, but still just an illusion. This is Free Will Debunked. In 1999, the celebrated master of lateral thinking, Edward de Bono, was asked by the British Foreign Office to come up with a solution to the Arab-Israeli conflict in the Middle East, and to their bewilderment, his response was to give them a jar of Marmite. Now, while this seems absurd, his logic was nevertheless solid. In short, he reasoned that since the average person living in the affected geographic region has a zinc deficiency, and since a lack of zinc causes people to become irritable and belligerent, the way to resolve their conflict is to send them endless supplies of the zinc-rich product that is Marmite. Now, I personally think that this is a stroke of genius, but the reason I bring it up is not to interest you in De Bono's work, though if I have, that's great. It's to illustrate that external factors that we are mostly unaware of and over which we have no conscious control, at least in part determine our consciousness, which in turn determines our decisions. A lack of zinc can indeed cause us to make aggressive decisions, just as a dose of caffeine can make us choose to be productive. But what am I getting at here? All these discoveries prove is that part of our consciousness is predetermined, not that all of it is. So what's my point? Well, the realisation and subsequent proof that external factors at least in part determine our consciousness has led many of humanity's greatest minds to suspect that our consciousness might be entirely determined by external factors. That despite the fact we're conscious, we're no more free than the wind. This, needless to say, is a very compelling hypothesis that, if true, would have unprecedented effects on our notions of praise, blame, pride and guilt. But that's all it's ever been, an untested hypothesis. That is, until very recently, with the birth and rapid advancement of neuroscience. However, before we move on to neuroscience, I want to clear up an extremely prevalent myth about this position, which for those of you unaware, is known in philosophy as determinism. The myth is that determinism is another word for fatalism, which is the assertion that absolutely everything is predetermined, and that therefore, absolutely everything is inevitable. The truth, however, is that while many fatalists call themselves determinists, and hence exacerbate this myth, determinism is merely the assertion that human consciousness is predetermined. It makes no claim whatsoever about the rest of the universe. Now, I grant that this distinction might seem pedantic, but it's not. It's extremely important, and the reason for this is because many people are convinced that various studies in quantum mechanics have demonstrated that the quantum world is random, and that therefore determinism is false. But with the definition clearly presented on screen, I'm sure you can see the issue here. Even if the quantum world is non-deterministic, this would not invalidate determinism. Sure, it would invalidate fatalism, but it would not invalidate determinism. So now we have objection three, which is, again, if quantum mechanics is random, then our actions are just caused by random events. Um, however, determinacy in quantum mechanics is not about randomness, but rather it's about not being, being able to know an outcome prior to measurement. The libertarian free will argument from quantum mechanics does not say that since everything is not totally predictable, then we have free will, but rather it says that particles act in a way we would expect if free will exists, and if conscious observers have a role in wave function collapse. And I also want to point out that decoherence does not explain collapse due to the fact that all, I don't know why that says articles, but anyways, particles in the universe are in a superposition prior to collapse. But of course, we, you know, this has to throw out the many worlds interpretation and hidden variable theories, but we already addressed that in our last response to the other objections, so I don't need to repeat myself here. So now let's kind of weigh the evidence for this. So far, we looked into physics and have shown that there is a second type of causality in the universe known as agent causation. 
When one accepts the basic facts of quantum physics without adding additional assumptions like hidden variables or many worlds, then it's most likely the case that conscious observers have free will to cause events in the universe without prior causes to them initially choosing those events. So with these facts of quantum physics, then it's most likely the case that humans have free will given this evidence from quantum physics. I Anyhow, with this myth now thoroughly addressed, let's look at what neuroscience has to say. In 1983, the pioneering scientist, Benjamin Labette, conducted a study in which he wired up subjects to an EEG machine to measure their brain activity. He then put a timer in front of them, asked them to consciously decide to perform a hand movement, perform the hand movement, and then report the exact time that they had made a conscious decision. And the results were extremely fascinating. He found that, the onset of cerebral activity clearly preceded by several hundred milliseconds the reported time of conscious intention to act. Or in other words, that the subject's brain had initiated the movement long before the subject had consciously made the decision to move. Now while this study was groundbreaking in the fact that it suggested that our consciousness is entirely determined, and that therefore free will is an illusion, it didn't prove it, because it left unaddressed a few disputable concerns. Namely, that the brain activity didn't predict a specific outcome of a choice, and that the delay was only a few hundred milliseconds, which means that this simply could have been due to latency. But in 2008, in response to these criticisms, Chun Sion Soon conducted a similar experiment using an fMRI machine, in which he asked subjects to freely choose between, and then immediately press, one of two buttons that were operated by the subject's left and right index fingers. And his results were truly remarkable. He found that the outcome of a decision can be encoded in brain activity of prefrontal and parietal cortex up to 10 seconds before it enters awareness. 10 seconds. And he went on to conclude that this delay presumably reflects the operation of a network of high level control areas that begin to prepare an upcoming decision long before it enters awareness. Now if Libet's experiment poked free will, Soon's drop kicked it. Because if we can accurately predict what you're going to do before you've even made a conscious decision, then your consciousness is evidently not free, and therefore your conscious decisions are not free. Or to put it another way, because your consciousness is predetermined, your free will is an illusion. You simply do not have the freedom that you think you have. However, there are many problems with this. First, later researchers demonstrated that the readiness potential was present even when subjects did not make any conscious decisions, which indicates that it cannot be the sole driving force in decision making. There are a lot of studies confirming this, and so I would advise my viewers, if interested, to check them out in the description as all my sources are cited there. With these studies in mind, this actually leaves room for many different interpretations of the Leibniz experiments, and which some of them are actually open to free will. So first, these are the different interpretations. First, we're gonna go over what's called, I call it the determinist interpretation. The readiness, in this interpretation, the readiness potential is always present and will cause the subject to make a decision 10 seconds before they are aware of that decision, and therefore free will is an illusion due to the subject lacking control over all their choices. In this interpretation, a person's consciousness would be entirely controlled by external factors. And of course, this interpretation would obviously be incompatible with free will. However, there are two other interpretations, which I'm gonna go over that are, that do in fact work with free will. So first is the veto interpretation. Leibniz himself actually proposes few. And in this interpretation, you have the readiness potential would act on its own, and then the person's intentional mind could veto the readiness potential from carrying out decision. In this interpretation, the brain will run an autopilot and carry out tasks, but the intentional mind has the ability to interfere and prevent actions from being carried out. This is compatible with free will. Then we have the most recent interpretation, which I call the deliberate versus arbitrary choice interpretation. The brain will run on two different processes of decision making. The first process is, of course, the arbitrary process, aka the readiness potential, in which someone makes choices that are determined, but these are arbitrary in which they are not important. For example, if you choose to press a button as they did in Soon's experiment or the Leibniz experiment, that would be the arbitrary. But then the second process is deliberate in which readiness potential is not present 
and someone can make an important choice, like for example, choosing to donate $1,000 to charity. In this interpretation, the arbitrary choices would be controlled by the readiness potential, but the deliberate choices are controlled by the intentional mind. This, of course, is compatible with free will. So now we're going to look more deeply into the veto interpretation. So recent evidence in neuroscience has, in fact, supported this interpretation over deterministic interpretations. In 2015, neuroscientists did find evidence for veto activity. It says, quote, in humans, spontaneous movements are often preceded by early brain signals. What such signal is the readiness potential that gradually arises within the last few precede that precedes a moment? An important question as to whether as to whether people are able to can cancel movements after the initiation of such readiness potentials. Here, subjects play the game where they try to press a button and earn points in a challenge with a brain-computer interference CBs, that had been trained to detect the readiness potential in real time and to emit stop signals. Our data suggests that subjects can still veto a movement even after the onset of the readiness potential. And so, of course, the significance of this is there has been a debate as to whether subjects can still cancel a movement after onset of these early signals. We tested can win a duel against a brain-computer interference designed to predict their movement in real time from, ob from observations of their EG activity. Our findings suggest that subjects can exert a veto even after onset of this process. However, the veto has to occur before a point of no return is reached after which participants cannot avoid moving. So that would actually be evidence for the video interpretation. Now we have the deliberate versus arbitrary choice interpretation. Recent evidence in neuroscience has also supported this interpretation. In early 2018, researcher Miles discovered that there are different neural mechanisms in the brain's decision making. So it says, quote, the onset of the readiness potential was repeatedly found to precede subjects' reports of having made an internal, an internal decision. This has been taken by some as evidence against a casual role for consciousness in human decision making and thus a denial of free will. Yet those studies focus on purposeless, unreasoned, arbitrary decisions. It remains unknown to, as to what degree these specific neural predicates of action generalize. We therefore directly compare the, the neural correlates of deliberate and arbitrary decision making during a thousand dollar donation task to nonprofit organizations. While we found that the expected readiness potential for arbitrary choices, they were strikingly absent for deliberate ones. The absence of readiness potential in deliberate decisions further points to different neural mechanisms underlying the deliberate and arbitrary decisions, and thus challenges the view that there is no casual rule for consciousness in decision making from arbitrary to deliberate real life decisions. And so what are the implications of this? So the implication of the veto interpretation is that the readiness, the readiness potential could be stopped by the intentional mind, thus allowing one to make a free decision in that time. The brain would run on autopilot until the mind is able to stop it before the point of no return. The implication for deliberate versus arbitrary choice interpretation is that the, the readiness potential would be present whenever a subject is making purposeless choices that have no effect on life or morality. But then free will is actually more involved when a subject makes more important choices and therefore there would be an absence of readiness potential. Of course, given the evidence I just went over, both of these interpretations have more support in recent neuroscience and are superior in explaining the full scope of readiness potential than the deterministic interpretations. And so these, I'm going to kind of outline the, the main arguments for why I think these type of arguments don't work. So to summarize, we took into account that the, the evidence against free will from the Leibniz experiments and that decisions can be predicted 10 seconds before a subject made a choice. However, there are three major reasons why I think any argument against free against free will based on these experiments fail. So the first reason why is that the readiness potential is present even when subjects are not making any conscious choices and therefore the readiness potential cannot be the cause of conscious decisions. The second reason why? Researchers have identified a point of no return in self-initiation movement which supports the interpretation that the mind has the ability to veto the readiness potential so that free will may take place in decision making. And finally, probably the most probably my biggest objection would be this. Miles has discovered that the readiness potential is absent 
when a subject makes a deliberate choice rather than an arbitrary choice. Thus, the experiment in 2018 by Sum therefore cannot be counted as evidence against free will due to the fact that the subjects were making arbitrary rather than deliberate choices, and therefore any previous studies that involved arbitrary choices cannot be counted as evidence against free will. In light of these studies, and of many more, each with differing equipment and methodologies, Harris has written that, one fact now seems indisputable. Some moments before you are aware of what you will do next, a time in which you subjectively appear to have complete freedom to behave however you please, your brain has already determined what you will do. You then become conscious of this decision, and believe that you are in the process of making it. You are not controlling the storm, and you are not lost in it. You are the storm. Now, in conclusion, I have to say that I'm honestly not convinced that the scientific community, let alone the general public, has acknowledged the gravity of these discoveries, either because they don't understand them, or they don't want to. And unfortunately, I suspect it's the latter. Humanity has always had a tendency to ignore inconvenient truths, such as human-induced climate change, and I think that the discovery that free will is an illusion is, and for a while will continue to be, one of them. Discussion on why this is the case. So, the free will interpretations are, of the live experience are not, are not incompatible with each other, and I think once we look more into readiness potential, there is a very high possibility that we may get a correct model of readiness potential that it is actually can help explain its relation to free will. And so, given that the main arguments against free will have been addressed, in the next video we will be looking into certain models of decision making that explain free will given our understanding of neuroscience and of course, readiness potential. And finally, I want to make this final important point. The study of free will is still in the early stages. But given the evidence so far, the arguments against free will from neuroscience all depend on an incomplete understanding of neuroscience, and therefore such arguments should be dismissed. So again, the fact that these arguments rely on data that does not take into account deliberate versus arbitrary choices, I think is a strong reason why we, should, we shouldn't really take these arguments as strong arguments against free will. So that'll be the end of this video.